Hey, what's up? So I will show you one of my personal projects. It's called Irela. It's a mini framework built in TypeScript in Node.js environment. So, and it's it's built on top of TypeRM routing controllers and type dependency injection. So the main idea or the goal behind this is to create simple APIs where you have maybe five, six controllers and um, you will map just some requests to controllers and maybe contact with the database, return the response. The, the response. So just b basically for small APIs where you need things to be organized and that's it. Um, and one of the one of its features that it has not only type RM but the type RM CLI integrated with simple commands so you can generate migrations and run them very easily and the whole CLI itself is exported and um, exposed for you and everything is contained so you don't need to install uh, anything globally so just npm install and you will be good to go uh, also routing controls is very fam it's very uh, nice I really liked it so you will have a syntax that is for the controllers that is similar to nest.js and dependency injection I like to do this so I can provide some classes as a single tone in many places as an the instance from these classes uh, you can you can actually remove this uh, remove this from your your workflow you can actually remove anything as you can see if you read the readme uh, nothing is actually linked that well so you can and the idea behind this is that you can just remove it you can actually remove the whole routing controllers and just use the normal express routes in typescript so app.get then pass the route and whatever but I will show you how the typical Irela application will look like. Uh, there is this readme if you want to read it. This is the basically the documentation at this moment. I am planning actually to expand it, but uh, it's not that fancy at the moment. So to start, you will just clone it. So git to clone, and after that finishes, go to it, Irela, then npm install, or npm i, which is for install. So after you do all of that, just open it in VS Code. And as you can see, I have it right here. So basically, the only f there's a couple of files that you need to know about. First one is the package JS to JSON. These are all the scripts you can run. So npm run any one of these. Dev to start the development server. Irela, this is the CLI generator. This is yeah one of its features. This is the linter if you want to lint any file. It's already exposed to you and installed. Uh, built to compile to JavaScript. Type RM. This is the type RM CLI exposed, as you can see. So you don't need to write all of this stuff each, each time. Migrate to generate migrations by name by giving it a name and run uh, to run a migration. And another f and this is the folder structure. So we have controllers, entities, interfaces, services, and types. Each one, I mean, I think they are self-explanatory. You, you can understand what to put in each one of them. Um, but the, the main idea that the request will reach a controller. If, if the controller needs to contact the database, it will call the service. Service will call the entity and retain everything. And that's basically the whole flow. So let's start by generating uh, a couple, by generating a controller. So npm run, Irela. So we will have this controller. So as you can see, you can move in the row with the row. So I'll call it users. And actually, there is another thing you can do with the name. Instead of passing uh, only the name, you can pass uh, a path. So helpers dot util and then well not dot it's forward slash then my name. This will create a, a controller in this route, as you can see. It will create these folders for you. So it's actually smart. It can understand if this is a path or just a name. And if, if it's a path, it will try to resolve that path and create that folder, that file there. So let's look at the user's controller. So as you can see, the route is users. So you go localhost, then the port, then the uh, then forward slash users to access this route. Uh, it's named uh, using the type title case I think Pascal case this is called but yeah as you can see uh, it got the name like it got named like this so these are the 
five routes it's available by default so if you go just to forward slash users you will execute this function if you pass an id you'll pass you will execute this function this is in case of get requests in post request this one be created this one will be called to create a new user for an example uh, this one to update a user this one to remove a user very very basic and uh, this is just out of the box so another thing what's up with these index.typescript exists everywhere these are to export so what my approach will be is to export everything you create in this index.typescript so no matter how nested this uh, file you're trying to export or this class you will just put uh, let me enable the formatter sorry about this so go to preferences settings open as json uh, to okay so the my yeah let me just return so anything no matter how nested inside any folder you will just export it from the index to typescript so at the end from any place let's go to our app.ts for example i can put import from at controllers and just import the user controller as simple as that and what is this add controllers if you go to our ts config you will see a couple of uh, aliases so add types will go to the index to typescript inside types add controllers will go here to the index inside the controllers and so on and this actually will work no matter where you are in the application that's why i like to use these it's really uh, any count anyway so yeah so this is basically the user's controller you should read these comments but basically this one says that you if you are using a database inject the service here so let's create a service oh you know before that let's create so npm run let's create uh, an entity you don't need a service without an entity maybe you maybe if you are you if you are free to do whatever you want so an entity maybe you will put the logic in the uh, in the services so okay well now we have an entity it's called users so as you can see this is the default structure i am importing stuff from the class validator and the class transformer just to show you how we can validate you should definitely read the documentation for these uh, this will work out of the box if you apply them which is very nice now let's generate a service we will generate two actually so a service we have two types so the base service this won't access a name it will just generate one and this one actually will be will hold uh, a CRUD operations which are generic so as you can see we are, accent, we are accepting a generic type and this will work in any service on any entity uh, that is a type rm entity which is very nice now let's generate a custom service called yeah custom called users and from the users this just extends the base service and the type will be user entity and let's just call the super function like that and let's just um, let's go to our entities now in the index just ignore all of that you really you will need to change this if you change the default driver so by default it's SQLite you need to if you need to change it just install the MySQL driver and uh, change these here you can actually use the .env file uh, which I will come in a moment which I will talk about in a moment so import or at the end I will export from users entity the users entity okay now I will go here and this will be at entities and I can reference it so as simple as that now this user service can create a, a whole CRUD uh, operations on the users entity and this decorator is to allow it to exist in the dependency injection uh, framework you will be, we will be using so let's export the user's entity or the user service sorry from here and let's go to our app.ts to provide it inside the dependency injection as you can see there is these to do's here 
you can uh, read them what you will use what we'll do to create to use this container from the type di and use container from the routing controllers and after you put stuff in the container just pass it to the use container as simple as that so i will use this class i need to import it add services just like we did in the other stuff like that and these actually accept the connection it will pass it to the generic uh, or it will pass the repository this is a type rm stuff the, i have a series on type rm if you are interested and that's it now we can go to the users controller let's import you are almost done by the way let's import the service and it's called dependency it's called type dependency injection because we can do this so private the only it's injected by the type okay that's why so let's return here this dot user service dot get data and that's will return all the users and of course we need to change the type so the partial user entity so this won't return the whole users right or not the whole users, the whole properties in the users. For example, password, this won't return it. So that's why it's a deep partial. So import from the entities, the user entity. Uh, it's, yeah, of course, an array, right? An array of deep partial users. Because we are retaining all the users as an array. This one will return the user by ID, so return this to say user service to get by ID and pass the ID. This will be the partial user. This also will return the partial user by creating one. So all the best service function will return uh, the, the instance that it uh, updated or created or uh, removed. So user service dot create and pass the data. This also will be uh, the partial of the user's entity. Okay. Now for the patch, this will be like this. I hope the video is not that long. So return the user service dot update, pass the ID, pass the data, and this will be the partial of user entity. Very nice. Now this dot user service to delete by id and this will return the user it got deleted so let's remove all of these to do's this con this controller is completely done now we need to add all th add the entity to our database to do this as you can see inside this index.ts in the entities i am passing false to synchronize so this won't uh, push the dat push the data push the models the entities inside the database what you need to do to npm run type rm migrate like this my type rm call and migrate then add the migration name so add users table so this will create a migration it will appear here oops yeah, yeah, this is actually a good uh, a good uh, point to good time to show you this. So by default, the type or MCLI will look for .env in the root directory. We don't have it. We have .env .example. So we need actually to rename this or create a new one with just .env. But this one is added to the git ignore, so you won't expose anything by mistake. I just left to you the .env .example. And actually, you should read about the type or MCLI. All of these will be used by it. So I'm using SQLite by default. You will change this. And if you are actually using MySQL, you will change this. And you will change the stuff inside the index and the entities like this here. So I'm using SQLite. You will change it. Only, or you will read stuff from you read stuff from here. So you can read these actually there. Um, it's, it's really easy but yeah since we did that this now will work all right we should see a migration in a moment yeah 
we have this migration so let's migrate it so npm run type rm run and actually I enabled logging so we will see a couple of messages here I enabled it here I have a video on my channel where I show you how we can create a custom logger which puts in the stuff in files so now let's open our database it's a SQLite database we will have two tables as you can see oops um, the migration so migrations table let's look at it we have only one migration which is add users table these are all the properties inside the user like this so but I actually won't use all of them so let's change it and run and create another migration so let's go to the users entity I'll remove everything I'll just oops I will just uh, keep the ID and this property I'll change it to username put its name here and now let's generate another migration called change users table and let's run it and see so run as you can see we have it here so this one will change it you can actually see the commands the SQL commands got generated very very nice so let's refresh our database look at the migration two migrations add and change and this this is now the user stable okay so let's now run npm run dev So this will run the, our application and it will show us like a pretty output as a table for the controllers. I am planning to add like npm scripts to show you the all the controllers in a separate file maybe. I think Laravel do that but not in separate file in the console but I will do it in separate file. And another thing, I will maybe I will create a command that will map all the routes with the controllers and show it to you. I hate when I seeing an application I don't know all the routes I need to go to a certain many files if there's a command that shows me all the routes and where I can look to know the, their functions that would be nice but anyway so these are our controllers as a table you have only one controller and connected with the database correctly so let me create a couple of users I have a command here it's a crawl command so as you can see I am passing username my name as JSON, this only accepts and retains JSON, this API, this uh, JSON controller. So, expost, uh, it's a post request. So, let's send it. We got we the API retained this user with ID 1. Do it again, ID 2. So, let's get, we have 10 users, which is nice. So, let's go, go here. 3030 30 now for users. We should see 10 users as you can see, which is very nice. And we can actually get one by ID. So this is the user 2, this is the user 5, this is the user 10. Uh, very nice. And uh, this is basically it for Elera. I hope this was not that confusing. Um, for me, it's really, I mean, I, li I like to do my APIs like this. Uh, especially simple ones. I, I still use nest and uh, sales, but this one is uh, um, for I will use it for only simple stuff. Especially when there is no database. But if there is a database, uh, I will use maybe SQLite or MySQL, and I will definitely use migrations since they are supported of the uh, of the box. So yeah, I will keep updating it. There is a repo and the there is a link that points to the report in the description and thank you.